<sighs> Friends, as the songwriter says, we awaken new every morning. And indeed, so too is our speaker this morning, as he comes to give us words of wisdom which will guide us in writing a new script for our lives this new year. Please join me in welcoming to our podium our beloved pastor, our minister, Reverend John Scott, to begin this morning's workshop. Reverend John. Good morning again, Temple family and friends, and extended family around the world on the World Wide Web. Happy New Year, and Happy New You. American journalist and syndicated columnist Ellen Goodman said, and I quote, we spend January 1st walking through our lives room by room, drawing up a list of work to be done and cracks to be patched. Maybe this year, to balance the list, we ought to walk through the rooms of our lives, not looking for flaws, but for potential, unquote. 2016, my friends, offers us 525,600 minutes in which to tap into that awesome, unfailing, ever-ready source of all good and to actualize our potential. And if we have squandered the first two days already, let's waste no more time. Please affirm in a full, strong voice, I weave the power of joy into my mind together. I weave the power of joy into my mind through prayer and constant contact with God. Through prayer and constant contact with God. And now in a half voice, I weave the power of love into my mind. I weave the power of love into my mind through prayer and constant contact with God. Through prayer and constant contact with God. And now in a whisper, I weave the power of peace into my mind. I weave the power of peace through prayer and constant contact with God. And now choose a God quality that appeals to you and silently affirm in your heart, I weave the power and name the quality into my mind through prayer and constant contact with God. And so it is. Friends, this morning and continuing tomorrow evening, each of us will have an opportunity to create a commanding vision for our life. I want you to listen, really listen, for the crackle of the new this year. And I've titled my encouragement this morning, Listen for the Crackle of the New. You know when you get a present and it's all wrapped in crisp paper, and as you open it, the paper is crackling, and you can't wait to see what good you are unwrapping in the present moment. That is the crackle of the new. You know that something wonderful is going to be opened for you. And that is the gift that the universe gives to you every moment of every single day this year. So listen for the crackle of the new, because God has all kinds of wonderful surprises in store for you. Reverend Bruce Sanguine of the Canadian United Church writing on evolutionary Christianity, and I've been doing a lot of reading about evolution and how we need to grow into greater than that which has gone before. Bruce Sanguine says, and I quote, when we listen to the stirrings of our own soul and to others, we consciously suspend our preconceptions, our judgments, and our interpretations in order to create a space for the unanticipated. And so I want us to listen this year to that inner, inner whispering in our soul that is called the still small voice, and to listen to other people and what they are saying with their hearts to us as we encounter them. Because often the words are not what it's all about. It's about the heart connection with people, isn't it? And if we can just suspend our judgments and our criticisms and our irritation uh, at, at things and just listen from heart to heart, then we can hear something that is truly worthwhile for each and every one of us, something we can really use this year 
to create a world that truly works for everyone. And so I want us to consciously create this space for the unanticipated by following the principle of Cezanne's doubt. Before starting to paint, the French post-impressionist painter would tilt his head intentionally to shift his habitual perspective. Tilt your head for a moment and look, at, look around you from that point of view. Different, eh? Now tilt it the other way and see the other person top side of you. Very good. This quality of what I call conscious skepticism, particularly our own skepticism, opens us to emergent possibilities. We need to look at life from a different perspective. We need to look at what has been happening this past year as we review 2015 from a different perspective. Is it possible that even stuff that we thought was not as we wanted it really was for our greater good? Reverend Michael Record and I, who do a program under the auspices of Stand Up for Jamaica, and there is um, the, the one don of Stand Up for Jamaica, um, George Young, JP, known as Junior to those of us that love him. When we go to that prison, they're able to look out of those circumstances at their lives and at life from a different perspective. And they have a lot of time in which to do it. While we rush around every day thinking that we have to accomplish this or that, and you know, it's, it's the end of the world if we haven't got something done, they have time. They, they get put into their cells at half past three in the afternoon, and they don't get out until half past nine the next morning. That's a lot of time to be looking at, at life from a different perspective, isn't it? And so I want us to make a, 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 an agreement and set an intention for ourselves to spend a little time. I'm not going to lock you down from 3.30. Oh, I wish I could. <laughs> and just get you to spend some time in silence every day, looking at your life from a different perspective. So Sanguine recommends, that, and I quote, we listen with an air to how three universal evolutionary attractors are at work. First, he says, listen for the allurement of deeper communion with self, with others, and with God. Listen for the allurement, the love. You know the tickle you know, when you meet somebody new and your skin catch fire for them and you can't wait to talk to them again and to be with them. It's that kind of allurement, that kind of, oh, yes, this is it. Um, on, you know, you're at the edge of your seat. I see people looking at people all over the audience with knowing, <laughs> knowing nods. Uh -huh. I'm up here, I know everything will go on. <laughs> Listen for that same allurement for the beloved seeking to express through you, to put its hand in yours, in your heart, and lead you into an amazing experience in 2016. And then Sanguine says, um, that we must indeed listen with the kind of intention that we want to tap into, into the creative impulse itself, which opens the conversation up to the influence of the prime directive, directive of the universe. And that directive is to involve and to evolve into greater than that which we have accomplished before. And so it's not just about having things and getting things uh, of which most of us have more than enough already. It's about a closer walk with the divine this year. And that theme that we have set with love, I'm serene in 2016 is a very important theme for you to carry in your heart. Because if you have love, then it means that everything else falls into place, doesn't it? Love creates greater health greater relationships, it creates a greater sense of why I'm on the earth, what is my purpose, what is the commanding vision that God has for me and my life this year. And it doesn't have to be something grandiose. It may just be to start growing some vegetables, or to heal a, a broken relationship, or to do that course of study that you have always wanted to do and that you've been saying if I was 20 years younger. Just, we're going to look at what is it that we want to achieve for God? And in achieving for God, achieve for ourselves. And so friends, what we're saying is that 
We need to dare to stand still and to listen. Just listen for the crackle, because there's something new waiting to happen in your life and in your affairs. Nicodemus, a religious authority, exemplifies this practice when he comes to the peasant rabbi, Jesus of Nazareth, suspending his own preconceptions in order to be alive to the third presence, which is a new wisdom, which Jesus called being born again. And remember, Nicodemus said, how can I enter again into my mother's womb? That's, you know, what are you talking about? And Jesus said, not that kind of birth. It's a birth from above. It's a reawakening to your divine potential and to why you are here on earth. But we need to listen. And so before we set our goals for 2016, we're going to spend some time listening within for spirit's highest intention for our lives. And then when we write our desires, we're going to ensure that what we want to be, do, and have, and it's nothing is wrong with being, doing, and having, is what, whatever we want is going to be supporting this commanding vision for our life. There was once a farmer who discovered that he had lost his watch in the barn. You know, barns are full of hay. And it was no ordinary watch because it had sentimental value to him. And after searching handlow among the hay for a long while, he gave up and enlisted the help of a group of children who were playing outside. So they stormed into the barn and he promised them a reward. So yay, you know, and they were having a great time looking, but they couldn't find the watch. And so soon they tired of the game and they left. All except one little boy who said, I'd like to look for the watch again. So the farmer thought, yeah, he seems pretty sincere, and I don't think by himself he can be up to much mischief. So he said, go ahead, go back into the barn and look. And very shortly after, the little boy came out with the watch in his hand. The farmer was both happy and surprised, and so he asked the boy how he succeeded where the rest had failed. And the boy replied, I did nothing. I just sit on the ground and listened. And in the silence, I heard the ticking of the watch and just looked in that direction. And so friends, you see, a peaceful mind can think better than a worked up mind, can't it? Allow a few minutes of silence for your mind every day and see how sharply it helps you to set your life the way you expect it to be. Better still, if you are not already a meditator, I strongly recommend that you learn this highly beneficial technique. It is an investment in self that pays enormous dividends mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Every person who is, a, who is serious about their spiritual and physical well-being should be a meditator. And you don't have to lock down from 3.30 in the afternoon until 9.30 the next day. 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening is more than enough to get you to another plane, another vibration, another, another energy of being, which will just pay enormous dividends in your life and in your affairs. And so I want us to do a spiritual exercise right now. Let's just begin this spiritual business. I want you to think of something that irritates you. You didn't think that was spiritual? All right then, think about someone that you're angry with or something that you're disappointed about. Maybe you feel neglected by your partner or ignored by your children or something didn't go the way you wanted over the past year. And I want to suggest that all of the various things that you may be thinking about that are just flashing through your mind right now, stuff that weighs heavily upon you and which you attribute to something or someone external is not about that person or that thing at all. As I say in Jamaica, eh, eh. <laughs> then, then what? If the other person is getting, is getting to me, it's not, it's not about them. No. It's about you and what you choose to do with that information that's being, that energy that's being beamed at you. As Science of Mind students, we know that everything in our outer world is a form, is an accurate reflection of what we are believing and feeling inside. And I never forget our beloved Dr. Elmore, our founder, Mr. always saying, if you look in the mirror and you hear it don't look good, don't comb the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But you know what happens? I don't know, sometimes we, we carry all of the baggage and the old hurts and the old mistakes and, and the old feelings. And they're like, they're like barnacles on the hull of a ship. You know, they, they gather and gather and there's these incrustations of all the favorite bad feelings that we've harbored over the years. And boy, it's hard for script them off sometimes. So we are about the business of removing those, th that tarnish, that stuff that has built up over the years, and that really obscures the purity, the beauty, and the wonder of our very souls. So here is your assignment, and you have to do it today. I love it, people get out their pens and their paper. I want you to make a fearless, non-judgmental, loving inventory of what you have going for you as well as what is hindering you as far as your spiritual journey is concerned. So you're going to make an inventory. I want you to take a sheet of paper and divide it down the center, you know, in two. And on one side, the left side, I want you to write all that you have going for you in terms of your, your quest for a closer walk with the, with the divine. And on the right side of the page, I want you to write down anything that is hindering you from a closer communion with the God of your being and the God of your understanding. And I don't want you to write it in judgment. I want you just to write it, you know, you know when you're doing an inventory at home and saying, well, I don't need this, I'm going to set, throw out this, this, I'm not, never going to wear this dress again, um, it will never fit. Um, just do it like that. In other words, it's not a matter of self-flagellation or, or, or you know, beating upon yourself. Just, just on one side, write all the good stuff that you have going for you that's pushing you towards. It's like a force field analysis, pushing you towards a closer communion with that precious thing that called you into being and that is with you every minute of the day. And on the other side, what's hindering you? What's, what's preventing you from, from having that, that sense of God and I are truly one? And I want you to tear the paper into and keep the good side and bring uh, the side that is no longer serving you to the temple tomorrow evening, and as usual at our workshop, we'll collect them and we will send them to be burnt. Every year I've burnt impatience, but I'm burning it again this year. <laughs> Fire for impatience. <laughs> and then I used to be impatient of people who were impatient. How do you like that? So. Be careful not to write anyone's name on your paper, on what I'm calling your release list, because this is not about anyone else. As you know, it's about you and what has been hindering your progress. Any questions? Everybody clear about that? Okay. I want to just end with a story by author James Broughton titled, One Day I Decided to Quit. And I want to end with this story because I was talking to someone, and I said, you're coming to the New Year's workshop? And I said, no, I can't, but every year I come and I, I, it's just not working for me. I really want out. <laughs> so it's, this is for anyone listening who feels, oh, heck, what's the use? I set goals every year and nothing ever comes my way. I'm not even going to bother to attend the workshop this year. Broughton writes, and I quote, one day I decided to quit. I quit my job, my relationship, my spirituality. I wanted to quit my life. And so I went to the woods to have one last talk with God. God, I said, can you give me one good reason not to quit? His answer surprised me. Look around, God said. Do you see the fern and the bamboo? Yes, I replied, I see the fern and bamboo. When I planted the fern and the bamboo seeds, I took very good care of them. I gave them light, I gave them water. The fern quickly grew from the earth, its brilliant green covered the floor, yet nothing came from the bamboo seed. But I did not quit on the bamboo. In the second year, the fern grew more vibrant and plentiful and lush, and again, nothing came from the bamboo seed, but I did not quit on the bamboo, God said. In year three, there was still nothing from the bamboo seed, but I would not quit 
In year four, again, there was nothing from the bamboo seed, and I would not quit, God said. Then in the fifth year, a tiny sprout emerged from the earth. Compared to the fern, it was seemingly small and insignificant. But just six months later, the bamboo rose to over 100 feet tall. It had spent the five years growing roots. It had spent the five years sending its root roots deep, deep, deep into the soil. So when it decided to shoot, those roots would anchor it and it could sway in the breeze and never be uprooted. Hmm. God said, do you know that all this time you have been struggling, you have actually been growing roots? I would not quit on the bamboo and I will never quit on you. Don't compare yourself to others, God said. The bamboo had a different purpose than the fern, yet they both make the forest beautiful. Your time will come, God said to me, and you will rise high. How high should I rise, I asked. How high will the bamboo rise, God asked in return. As high as it can, I answered. Yes, God said, give me glory by rising as high as you can. And so I, let the for I left the forest and bring back the story. And I hope these words can help you see that God will never give up on you. And that's the truth, friends. God will never give up on you. So make your inventory. Write down on the one side, the left side, all the things that you have going for you when you have a lot. And on the right side, Honestly write on what no longer serves your quest for a closer union with the God of your being. You ready to grow? Yes. Are your roots deep enough for you to shoot up in 2016? Then say with me, I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to grow. I'm firmly rooted in principle. I'm firmly rooted in principle. This year, I will rise as high as I can to the honor and glory of God. This year, I will rise as high as I can to the honor and glory of God. I'm in partnership with God. I'm in partnership with God. And God will never give up on me. And God will never give up on me. To your neighbor say, God will never give up on you. Listen to the crackle of the new. God will never give up on you. Listen to the crackle of the new. Friends, Sarah Bon Brannock, who is one of my favorite authors, wrote, take a leap of faith and begin this wondrous new year by believing. Believe in yourself and believe that there is a loving source, a sower of dreams, just waiting to be asked to help you to make your dreams come true. Trust me. God, the living spirit almighty, that which called you into being, that which sustains you in its own purity, its own perfection, its own wholeness and holiness and joy, that God, that God of your very being will never, read my lips, never give up on you. Happy New Year and Happy New Year.